Hey freaks, what's up? I'm Tony. And I'm Linda. Welcome back y'all. On the agenda for this week is a long time freak drops into the drop zone. Do you have a vitamin deficiency? How about a few signs to watch out for? Mental challenges after surgery? It happens to many, so don't be afraid to ask for help. A quick tip on snacking. And I've got two words for you. Oatmeal cookie. Look at you, Tony Tao. Working on it, getting some guns. Look at you with your guns. Gun Time show. for the gun show, the gun baby. Show. This week in the Drop Zone, we have a longtime freak who's no longer out of breath. This week's Drop Zone freak is Keela Heffington, or as she's known on the BTV forums as Indie Kitty. So, what's Keela's reason for why she's glad she chose surgery? She said, I'm glad I chose surgery because I've lost over 150 pounds and I no longer have liver tumors or non-alcoholic dethiohepatitis, which is fatty liver hepatitis. And I can walk across the floor without being out of breath, and I can keep on walking if I so choose to. Congrats, Keela. And just so you all know, Keela sent this in a while ago, so she's probably lost even more since then. So Keela, post in the comments where you're at today. And if you want to be a Drop Zone Freak, just send us your before and after, before and during, or even just a before picture, and one sentence on why you're glad you had surgery to feedback at bariatrictv.com. And when we feature you on the drop zone, you'll get a tasty sample pack of protein powder from the cool kids over at Big Train. They are the cool kids, by the way. They are the cool kids. Woo woo! It's the official Big Train sound. Now we're hippity hopping over to the dumping ground. Nice hippity hoppity. Speed away, go. Welcome to the dumping ground. <laughs> a robot. Just like a robot. Vitamins. They're more than just little pills to pop, chew, or slurp. They're the building blocks and support system of our bodies. Well-rounded, healthy diets can provide all a growing body needs. But once you're surgically altered, diet just doesn't cut it anymore, freaks. The reality of our altered anatomies, busy lifestyles, and sometimes finicky eating patterns can lead to vitamin deficiencies. Knowing what to look for part of the battle. The following signs of vitamin deficiency are by no means complete, but it will give you a good idea of potential problems. I'm overly dramatic today. <laughs> vitamin D deficiency is now recognized as a common problem post-surgery. Signs that you're not producing enough includes irritability and muscle cramps. Seizures and breathing difficulties could also be traced back to insufficient vitamin D. You can combat vitamin D deficiency with vitamin D supplements, exposure to sunlight, milk, cheese, yogurt, and egg yolks. What about vitamin A deficiency? Low levels of this vitamin can lead to serious vision problems. It's the Fonzie vitamin. All the orange stuff. A. A. Vitamin A deficiency can start to show up as tiredness, hair loss, weakness, and weight loss. Other symptoms include dry eyes, scaling of the skin, and respiratory infections. To combat vitamin A deficiency, you can eat plenty of yellow and orange vegetables such as carrots, yams, and squash, as well as eggs and cheese. Next up is vitamin B12. A deficiency in this vitamin can show up in a wide variety of ways. Specifically, vitamin B12 greatly influences the nervous system, brain functions, and the heart. Signs that you lack the proper amount of vitamin B12 include abdominal pain, edema, weakness, insomnia, and in some cases you may begin to lose your voice. You should also already be taking vitamin B12 supplements. If you aren't, get on it. Do you find that you're bruising easily? This could be a sign that you're not getting enough vitamin C. Additionally, you may experience joint pain, dry skin, poor appetite, frequent nosebleeds, infections, and illness if you're low on this vitamin. To combat vitamin C deficiency, eat a wide variety of citrus fruits, strawberries, tomatoes, kiwi, and green vegetables like broccoli. What about orange juice? That's a good one. It has a lot of sugar in it though, so. What about orange juice with vodka? Hey, it's vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. While the problems caused by vitamin deficiency are shocking and totally avoidable, it's important to note that excessive amounts of vitamins taken in supplement form can be toxic to the body. So, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Best thing to do is get your labs done each year and take your vitamins daily. There are tons of choices out there. 
some we suggest are better than others, but what it comes down to is that the best vitamins for you to take are the vitamins that you actually take. It's your body. Take care of it. Remember, the only way to be successful and remain successful is to alter your reality. Bariatric surgery. It's the most effective weight loss option for people who are severely obese. Yep, but keep in mind that surgery does involve risk, and it requires a lifelong commitment to behavioral change. The physical aspects of surgery are well known, but when it comes to understanding the psychological side, not so much. And that's why we always suggest that patients should be prepared both mentally and physically before surgery. Mood disorders such as depression and anxiety affect many people who are eligible for bariatric surgery. The weight loss following surgery generally improves mood, at least initially. Studies show that although depression and anxiety were significantly reduced one year out from surgery, it tends to increase after two to four years. Addictive eating disorders such as binge eating also affect many people considering weight loss surgery. Pay attention now, freaks. Bariatric surgery may cause some people to lose weight, but then transfer their food addictions to something else. Alcohol seems to be one of the favorites for this addiction transfer. And since surgery changes the rate at which alcohol is absorbed, this may increase the risk of dependence in those vulnerable to addition. 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 <laughs> since my surgery, I can't stop adding. <laughs> As part of our pre-op requirements, we have to go see a psychologist to determine if we are good to go for surgery. But seeing a therapist once is not good enough for most of us. In a lot of cases, therapy should continue well into the first years after surgery. Big changes usually cause big drama, and if you aren't equipped to handle it all, you need to find someone who can help you. It's not weakness to seek out help. You asked for help to lose weight when you decided to have surgery. The mental piece of this pie is just another slice. Freaks. Do not save yourself from an early death due to the effects of morbid obesity only to die from a cross addiction. Not saying that all cross addictions are deadly, but anything done in excess is usually not healthy, physically, emotionally, or economically. We don't want you insane in the membrane or six feet under. What we want is for you to keep freaking on. Insane in the membrane. Do it insane in the brain. Woo! Insane in Woo! the brain. When it comes to hunger, are you really hungry? If you answered yes, then would you eat an apple or a banana? If that doesn't sound good, then the answer is really no. You're not hungry. We often eat out of habit or boredom without realizing that we're not actually hungry. If you are hungry, think about this. Is the snack you're about to munch on helping your body? If it's heavily processed, won't expire anytime soon, and has ingredients you can't pronounce, that snack is not doing you any favors. Is the snack full of empty calories? Probably not a good choice either. Try eating whole foods like fresh fruits, veggies, and unsalted nuts. Say yes to delicious, easy to prepare, healthy, inexpensive snacks. Now, back to VTV. Sometimes I find myself looking through my kitchen cupboards for a little something sweet. Me too. But we usually don't have a lot of sweetie snacky stuff that I'll eat and not feel guilty about. Right, because usually I only need a little something. Nothing big, nothing dramatic, just a little something once in a while. And we found the perfect recipe for just such an occasion. It takes no time at all, is warm, gooey, and you don't have to worry about having extras lying around tempting you because this recipe makes only one. This is another recipe from our buddy Linda Farnsworth, and it's a yummy oatmeal cookie. An oatmeal cookie? So just one? Truly just one? Yep. Linda calls this the just one oatmeal cookie. How about that? The ingredients are pretty darn simple. One teaspoon of melted butter. But we're doing two cookies, so this is two teaspoons. Because there's two of us. Right. Hence the two. Right. Got it. One and one half teaspoon of egg beaters or whipped regular eggs. So we've this got three. Is one whipped regular egg, and Tony wanted me to show you my my whipper. This is so cool. This was my grandma's. I love it. Exercise. Old fashioned or. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? One and a half. <laughs> one and a half tablespoons of oatmeal. One and one half tablespoons of oatmeal. Old fashioned or quick. Quick works best. We're gonna use the quick weight control cinnamon oatmeal. And we're gonna do three tablespoons, because remember, we're doubling it. There's two of us. 
So two teaspoons of Splenda granular. Splenda. Pinch of salt. We're not going to do that. Pinch of cinnamon. We're not going to do that. Drop of vanilla. We're not going to do that either because we're using the flavored oatmeal that already has all that stuff in it. See? See how we are? Okay. The directions are pretty simple. Mix all the ingredients in a bowl and drop on a cookie sheet. Flatten them slightly and then bake them. So here we go. We're going to mix them all. We're going to mix them in the butter because the butter's already measured out. So we're going to do three of the eggs. One, two, three. And then we're going to do three of these. Oh. As our friend McNeese says, oots. Oots. Two. Three. And then we're going to put just a tiny bit of Splenda in there in case all the good stuff's down at the bottom. You know, just to make sure it's cookie-esque. All right. Oh, uh, oops. And then were we going to put some raisins in it too? We're going to doctor it up a little bit, folks. And then I'm stirring. Tony's going to add some raisins. We're going to make oatmeal raisin cookies. Oops. One dropped. Raisin overboard! It's been sacrificed to the Tony God. Okay. Then we're going to, oh, we're going to kind of even up, up and Gotta spread the, eight, the raisins amongst them. Yeah. Neither one so of we're going to put it on a cookie pan. We've already sprayed it with butter flavored pan. Nom, nom, nom. There's one. Danielle's saying, I want cookie. I think yours got more raisins. Well, but yours has more oats. Okay. How, how, what do you, why is that mine? That's good. Well, now we're flattening it out slightly as Miss Farnsworth directed. Now these are going to go in a 350 degree oven for about eight to 10 minutes. And then they're then we're gonna eat them. That's it. So somebody go commence the baking. Okay, here they go. Oh, look at that body. Oh, look at that body. I work out. Where are the cookies? Oh, here they are. Check those out. Hold on, hold them up. Hold them right there. Hold them right there. Let me get a close up so we can actually see what those yummy cookies look like. Cookies. They're all like crispy on the bottom. They are. Okay, hold on, come back. And we're back, kids. Tell the good folks about the stats, Tony Cow. So the stats won't have you feeling guilty. Per cookie, 69 calories, three grams of protein, five grams of fat, three net carbs, two grams of fiber, zero sugar, 41 milligrams of sodium. And if oatmeal isn't your thing, she also has one for a peanut butter cookie. Mm. <laughs> Check out these recipes and more at eatingwelllivingthin.wordpress.com. I need some coffee to go with my cookie. Well, let's try the cookie first, shall we? Yeah, this is the important part. How does the cookie taste? It's really good. Are they good cookies? Come here, Danielle, have some. Everybody, Danielle. See, she is still alive. Mm -hmm. And look at, she's like half of her former self. Mm -hmm. Do a little spin for the people. Look at that. I'm bite of my cookie. Mm -hmm. Mike, you want some cookie? I do want some cookie before it's all gone. Mm. I probably have to get lower or I'm gonna be all out of frame. Get low. Oh my God, that's so are like super good, they're buttery. Mm -hmm. Why are you keep feeding me? <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> it's her job to feed him. Excellent cookies. Another week done and gone. Time does fly when you're having fun. I guess it's time for us to take off. But remember to send us your show ideas and product recommendations, drop zone, and who inspires you entries to feedback at bariatrictv.com. And come visit us over at the btvstore.com to order up some bariatric goodies. Oh, and click on one of the batter it. Yeah, banner. Yeah, we gotta start all over again, don't we? No, go. No. Oh, and click on one of the banner ads and order up some of our sponsor's goodies. Supporting them is a great way to support the show. Take care all, and we'll see you back here again next week. Saint BTV time, Saint BTV channel. Na 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 BTV! See that? We were harmonizing. Did you catch that? I got that. Nice.
VTV disclaimer, there's a lot of airplanes flying around today, so if you hear some buzzing, it's not Bob. It's the airplanes. Congrat. There's an R in there. <laughs> Arr! Arr! What about vitamin A deficiency? Low levels of this vitamin can lead to serious vision problems. <laughs> Have a hard time seeing the prompter? I can't see. Somebody get me some vitamin A. Stat! <laughs>